is the first time with these microphones, so I'm, I'm just wondering if we're too loud or if everything sounds well. How do we see a sound back there? Okay, um, it sounds like a nice system finally, it's good. Uh, announcement of adequate notice of meeting. Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, this meeting notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press on May 15, 2018, and has been duly advertised in the Adbury, Asbury Park Press issue of May 18, 2018. All municipal clerks of the townships and boroughs within the regional high school district have been duly notified, and the requirements of posting of notices have been met on May 15, 2018. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, May I have a motion to approve the minutes of June 10th, 2019? Second, anyone? Second, Mr. Heshi, Moses. Discussion? Sean, a roll call? Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Cappiello? Yes. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Uh, I have to be honest, I'm, 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 You were here. You were here. Mrs. Sutera? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Astol? Yes. And feel well, Mr. Moses. You look great. Uh, communications are on file in the office of the board secretary. Uh, right now, we have a public hearing on the superintendent's contract. And I'd like to um, turn that portion over to our counsel, Mark Toscano. But before we start that, for um, I see we have one person signed up for uh, public comment. Um, we will have a public con comment on the uh, this portion of the approval of the uh, new contract for the superintendent, and we will have a separate public uh, comment period. So please wait for the second public comment period, and we'll, I'll call that out. Okay, uh, with that, Mark, please uh, sure. commence. Sure. Uh, the, as required by law, uh, anytime a Board of Education uh, renegotiates or modifies uh, an existing contract uh, for an assistant superintendent, an assistant superintendent, or a business administrator, the board is required uh, to conduct uh, a public hearing. Uh, New Jersey Department of Education recently had a case uh, in January that clarified uh, how that obligation uh, was to be applied uh, to new employment contracts, which is uh, the case uh, that is before the board tonight. Uh, the proposed employment contract uh, for Dr. Sampson uh, will run from the 2019-2020 school year through the 2023-2024 school year. Uh, so in contrast to his current existing contract, it is adding the 2022-2023 and 2023-2024 school years. Uh, it has the, the other difference between the current contract and the proposed contract is that uh, the language in the contract as it relates to health insurance benefits contributions has been updated uh, in light of changes in the law, uh, in particular the sunsetting of the Chapter 78 uh, legislation. So uh, that was another uh, mandated change. The final change uh, pertains to salary. Uh, because the Freehold Regional High School District has more than 10,000 students, 
it is uh, considered what the Department of Education terms a waiver school district. Uh, what that means is that a Board of Education of one of those districts can apply to the commissioner for a waiver to go above what was the superintendent's salary caps. Uh, those caps no longer exist. Uh, they were abolished by legislation that was signed by the governor on Friday. Uh, this process was conducted under the caps. Uh, the proposed salary numbers um, are approved under that old cap system that again is, is no longer here, but it is uh, in line with the budgetary and physical accountability uh, requirements. Uh, the difference uh, between uh, the salary uh, from the 2018-2019 school year to the 2000, excuse me, 2018-2019 to the 2019-2020 school year, which would be the first full year of the new employment contract, is $4,500. Where did that number come from? That number uh, came from uh, there is a long-standing practice within the Freehold Regional High School District, and it's contractual as well, that whenever employees receive a doctorate degree, uh, there is a $4,500 stipend. Uh, as a, uh, because under the accountability regulations, uh, stipends uh, are not permitted, uh, the board applied for a salary waiver. Uh, that salary waiver was approved by the Commissioner of Education to increase the, the salary for 2019-2020 by $4,500. So that was approved by the Commissioner of Education. The contract as a whole was then reviewed and approved by the Executive County Superintendent. Uh, so it has been reviewed both at the state level uh, and at the county level. Uh, those are the three main changes that are in the proposed contract, a copy of which uh, is available on the back table in the back of the room. Uh, and that is the summary, Mr. President. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm going to ask for a board participation in a second, but first I'd like to uh, make a few comments, if I may, and myself, and I know that uh, Pesci previously had said that you were going to make some comment too. And of course, anybody on the board is welcome to do so uh, the same. Uh, Chuck, uh, I, I have a question for you because I can't remember. How long have you now been on the board uh, on the, as the uh, superintendent? This is, this is my ninth year as superintendent at the Friel Regional High School District, which makes me 107 years of age. <laughs> well, what, what then would that make me as far as age? Because I know I'm a lot older than, than you are. And uh, I recall when I first came to run for Board of Education, I, my platform basically was because I saw a lot of things that I didn't like, that we would have no shenanigans, no tomfoolery, no ballyhoo. And I think that you have delivered on what I asked for when we first met. In my previous lifetime, I led a awful lot of federal investigations into public entities. And if there was one thing that we were not going to allow in any shape or form, and did I make this very clear when we first spoke, that uh, I don't run the district, I'm just the board member here, but that's your job. But the moment that I see anything that is questionable, rest assured, it's going to go to the proper authorities to, to be properly investigated. Maybe I'm a little bit too, too strict on that. I don't think you could ever be too strict on that. But one thing for certain is we also go to legal counsel, who I trust in implicitly, and it was always, to the best of my knowledge, given us tremendous uh, legal advice. And for that, Mark, you also heard my uh, comments regarding shenanigans, tomfoolery, and ballyhoo. Am I correct? Thank you. Yes. And we don't have that here. So. Um, 
I am so proud of the changes that have come through in, in this district, and I'd like to have other comments from other board members. I, I know, Heshi, you raised your hand first, and if you could please uh, say what you had to say. long time ago, it seems to me, <laughs> yeah. when I uh, was sent by the board to interview superintendents because we were looking for a new superintendent here. Uh, and I went to Mr. Sampson's school district. And I remember I went with Sean. And I wanted to interview, they gave me a list of people to interview, like the vice principal and things like that. I didn't want to interview those people. I wanted to interview like, teachers, custodians, coaches. You know, I wanted to see how this man treated other people. Um, I worked in this district as a teacher and coach for 35 years. I've been on the board for, obviously, if it says nine, then it's nine years. Um, so that's over four decades. Um, I've worked under three different superintendents and with a fourth superintendent. He is the first person that I can honestly say is, number one, not a politician. Yeah. Number two, the first educational leader we have ever had in this district since 1971. And I am just so proud that we get to keep him for an, an, another five years or more. Um, and I know that um, Chuck will appreciate this being an ex-coach. I once thought that the greatest thing I ever did in this district was bring a state championship, the first state championship to the high school I worked in. And now I realize that wasn't the best thing I've ever done. The best thing I've ever done was to help bring this government to this state. Do we have uh, do we have more comments from the board, please? Anyone? With that, if there's any comments, uh, seeing none uh, from the public, please present them now. Re with the issue only regarding to the uh, contract change of Mr. Sampson, and that includes anyone, including Mr. Dunyu, if you want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you're good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, very good. Um, so let me call for a motion to approve the contract. Motion. Motion by Mrs. Cetera, uh, second by Sam Corolla. And Sean, could you take a roll call? Oh, well, yeah, hey, I always miss something, don't I? Uh, is, is there any discussion? No discussion. So, um, Sean, could you take a roll call for the approval? Mr. Bruno? Abstain. Ms. Capiello? Abstain. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Absolutely. Mrs. Sutera? Yes. Mr. Acetola? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Mark, thank you for your comments and for helping me out with that uh, public session there. Meetings can get some. Uh, I'd like to yield the um, floor to the superintendent now for your report, please. Thank you, Mr. Acetola, and um, thank you to the board as a whole. And uh, I certainly appreciate the comments uh, from Mr. Acetola and Mr. Moses. Um, you know, the, uh, when we do so many things well in this district and the reason we do it well is because it starts with the board and the governance structure here has always been, uh, this board in, in my now ninth year here has always made decisions for kids first. Um, sometimes with some of the members at, at the table, um, not to the benefit of their own community, but to the benefit of other communities because it helped our, our children as a whole and the, and that's the beauty of a, a regional district. 
Um, I feel very fortunate to uh, have come here in 2011 when I did. Um, it's, it's a place that I've uh, grown uh, tremendously. I've been able to uh, build a, a wonderful team um, and we serve unbelievable communities here uh, that really value education. Uh, the next the next few years will be a um, a bumpy ride for us, and and what that looks like um, long term, you know, none of us are certain at this point in time. Um, however, I do know that um, the the public can feel confident uh, in the elected officials that they have at this table, and I know that um, you know going into the, the the ninth year as a superintendent those are that's that's an incredibly long run in, in a district this this size um, but when I look around the folks at the table have also been uh, involved for an extended period of time and so our consistency um, has been has been I think uh, a real driver of the work that we've been able to get done in, in this district so I'm you know I'm, I'm, I'm grateful this is this has always been where I wanted to be when I came in 2011 it was the only district I applied to um, and that was it and I put all my I put all my marbles in in that basket and I do still remember uh, Mr. Moses walking down the hallway in Verona High School with his uh, borough jacket on quizzing uh, custodians of whether I was in a good person or not, um, and uh, I've told this story before, but he happened to run into Anthony, the head custodian. Now, what Mr. Moses didn't know is that every Wednesday, Anthony and I had some of his mother's pasta fazool together for lunch, and so it was uh, it was perfect that um, he he ran into uh, to, to Anthony on on that day. But um, I feel fortunate, and uh, and I'm, I'm appreciative. So thank you to the board. Um, as for my report, our, our summer program, something very um, interesting happened just this evening. For the first time, in I, as long as I know in this district, all six high schools lost power simultaneously. Um, that was a, a bit of a freak storm that came through. Uh, so tomorrow, we're going to monitor that situation closely because we have a ton of summer programs underway, and there's, there's a possibility that some of that might be impacted. Um, but to give the, the, the public some of the scope of some of the awesome programs that we have underway. So we offer uh, a, an original credit summer program here where students that um, have the interest and, and, and drive can take original uh, courses so that they can progress through the, the continuum of course offerings. And we have 191 students in, enrolled in that program alone. Um, we have a credit recovery program. We're proud to offer our own credit recovery program rather than having to send students out to other places and there are 45 students enrolled in that. Our extended school year program has a few hundred students as well. Some of our, some of our um, neediest students in the district that I think uh, that program has always done a phenomenal job. Uh, we have our Title I program at Freel Township High School where we have about 65 students in, in that summer program as well. And then just this afternoon or this morning, one of the things that we started here eight years ago was a, an, a, an AP Summer Bridge program for students that wanted to challenge themselves in more demanding courses uh, but maybe were, were not as confident as they as they could be or felt they wanted some more skill development. And so we 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 from the ground up with a number of our, our AP teachers across the district built this AP Summer Bridge program um, and it's exceeded our wildest dreams. You know, we have um, 233 students enrolled in that program this year, which is just a wonderful opportunity for students to um, take a week out in the summer um, and, and, and dive into some of the specific skills that will help them be successful in more challenging courses and it fits with our mission of really providing not just the opportunities, but the corresponding support for all students to challenge themselves in 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 in, in the best ways possible in, in in this school system. And that it's certainly not because of that program alone. But when you look back in 2011, we had 11,800 students in this district, and there were 2,200 or so AP exams that were taken by students. And this past year, we had about 10,600 students in the district, so we've lost some students. Um, but we had well over 6,000 AP exams taken by students. So that's been the sort of trajectory of opportunities for, for students here. 
Um, and and we're, we're, we're proud of that. So the summer is not quiet here. It's actually really busy. Um, and hopefully we have power tomorrow because we need it. Um, oh, yes. So it hasn't started yet. So the first week in August, we also uh, new this year have the college application boot camp. Um, one of the things that came out from, you know, when we, when we really put together our latest strategic plan, uh, we ran uh, a lot of student focus groups and student interest groups and, and really surveyed the students, interviewed groups of students, talked to faculty and staff and, one of the, and parents, and one of the things that um, came out over the years was that, you know, students would really appreciate a leg up in the college application process and especially the essay and what that might look like. And so we spent about a year really putting together a program um, that we're proud to launch this August um, for those students who are interested. So yet another summer program. Um, so busy. A um, couple other a couple other items. Uh, our our HIB self report. So the state folks know now across the state. Um, you know the, the 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 HIB law that was passed in 2012, I believe. Um, requires districts to conduct their own HIB self-assessment at each building level. The highest score that you can receive is a 78. I believe we came out at, at a 77. It's, 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 it's self-reported, um, but we take an honest look at where we think we might meet expectations and where we exceed expectations. And there's a number of different criteria that each building has to fill out based on who's gone out to training, what sort of training has been provided in the building. And so we always we always come out very well with the with the HIB um, self report. So that's on the agenda for this evening as well. Um, one of the things that is also on the agenda that we're 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 looking at, and I'll ask Mr. Boyce if if he wants to provide any any further detail, but it's pretty self explanatory. Um, folks know that uh, the the passage of S two has had a uh, potentially profound negative impact on this district and one one of the things that we have engaged in is to make sure that we sort of vigorously attack that budget decimation at every potential avenue so we have taken part in the lawsuit we have advocated with our local legislators um, ad nauseum we have helped draft legislation and the third and final component of that um, is tonight on the agenda is, is um, passage of an emergency aid application for infrastructure needs because one of the things that uh, we're most concerned about long term, year over year, uh, with six large high schools, transportation depot, uh, if you walk around the outside of this building, this is not a new building. Um, the the long term infrastructure cost of things like roofing and paving and things of that nature are still gonna have to get done and um, the potential there to have that even cannibalize the ac academic program even more is, is extreme. So obviously we have the referendum um, that's, that's geared up for election day, um, but we're also provide, uh, putting forth a, a, um, an application for emergency aid for our infrastructure cost uh, across the district. Am I missing anything there, Mr. Boyce? No, I, I think I'll, I'll read the resolution into the record uh, when the time comes. But we're we're going to take every opportunity to have conversations with the Department of Education over school funding, um, and uh, the emergency application process is is vague in in terms of what the criteria are. The, the overarching concept is it's uh, for districts in imminent fiscal distress. Um, our philosophy is to not arrive at fiscal distress, is to um, make sure that we take the steps necessary to do that. So we'll craft the application accordingly, submit it, and um, we'll follow up with the board when we have a response from the Department of Education. And then a um, couple other items. We are uh, use, utilizing Title IIA uh, federal funds to attend the National Conference on Grading and Assessment uh, next week. There's a, there's a number of us attending that outside of the University of Maryland. Um, one of the things that uh, we're looking at in our strategic plan uh, really revolves around certainly the utilization of formative assessment and grading and what that looks like. And so 
uh, having the opportunity to uh, spend some time with some noted national experts and debrief on our own as, as a team uh, is, is exciting to us. Um, and that, that opportunity is uh, next week. And then um, as we move forward over, over the course of the summer, I would just um, in, encourage uh, any board members that want to see any of the summer programs to come out and take a look because they're really, they're really phenomenal programs and we're very proud of them. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Um, at this point, we want to do board reports. And the only report that we have uh, right now is the uh, curriculum and instruction report. And Mike, would you like to take that, please? Sure. Thank you, Carl. Um, we had a pretty full agenda. The first thing we did talk about was Summer Academy and Mr. Sampson uh, really uh, gave us a good update of what we talked about. The only thing I add to what he says is that just so everybody knows, like within original credit, the most co course offerings we have are in geometry. So those math students looking to get ahead. And then with respect to AP Bridge, we have the most sections in US history and biology. Uh, we went on to discuss the building capacity for career pathways grant. As we talked about quite frequently, uh, we're in the fourth year of the grant. Uh, with respect to web design pathway, uh, in 2021, that's school year 20 to 2021, the program's gonna expand to Marlboro and recruiting for that's gonna begin this October. Um, right now it's just in borough and township. And then with respect to the health professions pathway, uh, in the school year 2020 to 2021, that is going to expand to Manalapan. Uh, with respect to the International Baccalaureate, I think we discussed last time it's being offered to students at all six schools, but physically the classes are and the programs are at Freehold Township in Howell. Um, the Freehold Township in the class of 2020 this year, there's going to be 20 students in that class. And with respect to Howell, the first cohort that will be graduating will be in uh, graduating in 2021. That's going to have 32 students. Um, then we moved our discussion on to the math uh, program core sequence. Um, we've also we've spoken before about how in 2020 to 2021 we're changing the sequence. So the class of 2024 will take geometry first, then they will take algebra one and algebra two. Uh, sophomore and junior year. So all ninth graders are going to come into geometry first before going on their different pathways. Switching gears to the college board, obviously we offer the PSAT for our ninth, 10th, and 11th graders. We've offered it to all three grades since 2016. Uh, the freshmen take a test, PSAT 8-9. Um, so all students are exposed to the PSAT assessment. And what our administration here does is they use the data from the PSAT results in curriculum writing. Um, and those PSAT test scores are also used by the district to intervene in certain areas of, let's say, math that a large group of students, if they did poorly in one particular aspect of the test, our administrators and uh, faculty know what to address with the students. And then to wrap it up with respect to curriculum approvals, we saw all the courses uh, that the curriculum uh, will be rewritten for during the 2019-2020 school year. And for all us board members at our August meeting, we will be asked to vote and approve these uh, curriculum items. And that's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mr. Boyce, are there any changes to the agenda that you wish to note? Uh, yeah, I have um, some additional items for the agenda. Before I do that, um, if I can ask Mr. Toscano to um, make some additions to the executive agenda. Yeah, just so the minutes are, are accurate, uh, in addition to the items that were noted on the agenda, uh, the board had also uh, discussed uh, number excuse me in box number uh three uh they discuss matters involving student discipline 
and for yes. box number nine, the board discussed matters involving HIV uh, case review. Uh, and also, I had just noticed it, and I apologize, but just so the minutes are accurate, with respect to the motion for Mr. Um, uh, for Dr. Sampson's employment contract, the fifth paragraph there should be stricken. We did conduct a public hearing as, as required by law, so uh, there was a public hearing uh, that was conducted. So uh, other than that, uh, and Ms. Cetera and Mr. Corolla, are, are you comfortable with that revision, just striking that provision? As you made, you had made the motion for Dr. Sampson's contract. Are, are you comfortable with that? Okay. Just we did do the public hearing, so yes. I, I just didn't want the I want the minutes to accurately reflect that. That public hearing was done. Mm -hmm. I paused. Okay. Um, so, in addition to yeah. um, the, uh, there's a page on the back table with uh, some changes to item G. Personnel and Negotiations 8, Approval of Change of Status, uh, and that is the um, appointment of Holly Fabian um, change uh, from the school counselor appointment on April 29th, 2019 um, at Freehold High School to Academic Supervisor of Personnel Services Guidance at Freehold Township High School, MA plus 30, uh, Step 2, Salary um, of 99,300 prorated per annum effective 723 2019 also on item number 11 approval of rescission um, rescinding the appointments of June 10th um, approval of an honorarian for honoraria for Holly Fabian that's rescinded that honorary is for assistant coach girls gymnastics <coughs> at Freehold High School also the leave of absence for Stephanie Kurt is rescinded um, leave of absence without pay in accordance with FMLA on the June 10th agenda. So those changes reflected on that sheet. Um, as noted earlier, um, there is an additional item on the agenda under section administration application for emergency aid. So I'll just quickly read that into the, into the record. Whereas the fiscal year 2020 Appropriations Act allows uh, for appropriations to the emergency fund account to fund approved school district applications for emergency aid and whereas the application for emergency aid requires a statement as to why the adopted school district budget reflective of the state aid reduction will re result in fiscal distress and whereas the Freehold Regional High School District believes that the continued implementation of S2 including the reduction of the fiscal year 2020 state aid in the amount of $3,780,766 will critically impact the necessary investment in infrastructure district-wide. Now therefore be resolved that the Freehold Regional High School District Board of Education hereby authorizes the submission of an application for emergency aid to the New Jersey Department of Education in the amount of $3,780,766. Also, uh, board, there was a placeholder included in the uh, agenda, um, H11. It was for the approval of a food service management company. Um, there was, uh, the con interviews were conducted late last week, needed to be compiled, and a report was delivered to the board earlier today, along with the resolution um, to award um, the food service management contract to Pomptonian Food Services for the period of July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Um, and it was further, the resolution further resolves that the award is contingent on review and approval of the contract and other required documentation by the State of New Jersey Department of Agriculture Division of Food and Nutrition, School Nutrition Program. So, um, we put out an RFP for food service management companies, which is required every five years. The, in the interim, you can renew your existing food service management company. So we were at that um, five-year five year mark. Uh, so we put out a comprehensive RFP, a lot of information about our schools, uh, the participation, and um, we recent, the past year, we moved to unit lunch, so we were sure to separate data from pre-unit lunch to post-unit lunch. So any um, proposed proposers had a, uh, an opportunity to really understand the nature of the business. We had two um, 
proposer, proposals submitted. Um, one, the incumbent Pomptoni, and also uh, Aramark, which is a, so a large food service management company. And a, an evaluation committee went through in accordance with the selection criteria listed in the RFP um, and concluded that uh, the recommendation would be to move forward with Pomptonian. Um, and as I said, I distributed that report um, to the board earlier today. Um, so we also have that. So those are the changes uh, to the agenda as posted earlier or on Friday. Okay. Now can I ask, on, a, can I ask yes. a question about that? Yeah. I'm interested in something, Mr. Voice. Voice. Um, so you had said that Aramark and Sodexo ended the tour after three schools, even though we have six. And I'm just curious, like, how did that work logistically? You had plans to to take them, and they just said, "Forget yeah. it," and walked away. Well, we 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 met at a certain time at Manalapan. We designated as the first high school. We walked that. Um, we then went to Borough, and w there is a, you know, a logistically a, a route to go around the district and hit the six high schools. Um, and each school, because of unit lunch, is is unique. I mean, the approach is the same, but just the the layouts are a little different. And I think it was important, and we encouraged all of the vendors that were there to, you know, make the loop through all of the schools because they were all going to be a little bit different. Uh, but they they were not interested. We then went to Howell, and that's where um, that's where we called it a day. Got gotcha. yes. Well, yeah. Sodexo is very familiar with our buildings. Yeah. They for many, many years. Right. They probably didn't even have to go to these buildings to know that the uh, block scheduling affected. Well, I think that it would have been of interest uh, because Sodexo was here previous to five years ago, although we just had our normal lunch periods and everything happened in the cafeteria. So, you know, lunch is a, changes the game. Where are things stored? And their personnel have to get that stuff out of the closet, set up in time. And there's, you know, there's a little bit different layout in each building. So, um, but Sodexo didn't even submit a proposal. proposal. So, just our mark. Okay, now to steal a line from Heshi, I want to go on to my favorite portion of the board meeting, which is public participation. And on the list, I see one name, Mark Parisi from Hal. If you would come up to the podium, please. And in the interest of full disclosure, I happen to know your dad, and uh, Mr. Bruno also knows your dad. I think he taught you once, yes. Yeah. Okay, how about that? <laughs> Good evening, board president, Thank you. board members, superintendent, administration. My name is Mark Parisi. I'm coming here tonight to introduce myself to you uh, and to notify you that I have submitted my petition for candidacy for the uh, Board of Education before you. And um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I, uh, I'm a resident of Howell. I'm married, I have children. I uh, have a feeling, a duty to serve my community, and I, I would like to be a representative of the Howell Township uh, on your board. Uh, I come from a family of educators. Uh, as board president already mentioned, my grandfather uh, taught English here in this district. My father was a music teacher in Colts Neck. I have uh, several other family members that are educators, so education is very near and dear to our family. Uh, a little bit about, about myself. I work for the New Jersey Department of Labor and the and the Social Security Administration. I've been doing that for 10 years. So that's just about me, but I wanted to come before you and introduce myself. And if in the future I'm elected, I look forward to working with all of you. And I'm aware of the state aid cuts, and I think that we can come up with some creative solutions to continue to provide the highest quality education to our students. And uh, I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Parisi. Okay, we're coming to the end now. Uh, may I have a motion to approve items G1 through K4? Second? Any discussion? Yes, Mike. 
Yes. Um, with respect to G1 resignations, I do want to point out that um, it's kind of sad to see one of the names on here, Deanna Trembo, because obviously we have a big school district. There's 10,800 students. And a lot of what I hear is, you know, if you're a stellar student at the top, you get a lot of attention. If you're all the way at the bottom, you get attention. But there's this massive amount of kids in the middle that, you know, they get through. But there's not a lot of attention focused on them. And my son, he's one of those ones in that big middle, okay? And what always impresses me is that in such a big school district, when you go in for conferences or talk to a teacher and that teacher knows your student, uh, your child and what makes them tick, um, that really stands out to me. And I just wanted to point out that, you know, it, um, it's quite sad to see somebody resign who I know was such a good faculty member at Marlboro and was one of those teachers that knew every kid and what made them tick. Because my son, I mean, he's not going to stand out where you would know what makes him tick, but she did. And so I think that's a sign of a very good teacher, as it is with, you know, many of the uh, staff we have here. So I just wanted to note uh, that, unfortunately, we have to accept our resignation. Thanks for your comment on that, Mike. It it's always important that every student, regardless of what uh, level they're on in the middle, uh, special needs children always have a special place in my heart. And the high achieving students are always getting what they should get. And they do get that to the best of my knowledge in um, Freehold Regional. And thank you for the staff for always doing that because I know that it's a hard job. It's not easy to always uh, find the place and the right place for for people. So again, we're going to um, ask for a roll call for approval of items G1 through K4. Mr. Bruno? Uh, yes, I abstain from K1, Dr. Hazel's conference. So it's yes for everything except for K1, Dr. Okay. Hazel. Mrs. Cappiello? <coughs> Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Mrs. Sutera? Yes. Mr. Acetola? Yes. Are there any members wishing to discuss old business? Any members would... Uh, yes. Okay. Ms. Capiello, I'm sorry, I missed you there. Um, I don't know if it's old or new business, but um, I guess I'm going to make it old business. Um, I um, am sad to note that my compadre, Mr. Carolla, um, has relocated, and this will be his last board meeting. And um, I've known Sam for a long time, and um, he's been with us as a teacher, as an administrator. Uh, you know, he's, he's a wonderful educator, and then he had the graciousness to spend his retirement time serving the community on the Board of Education. And um, you'll be sorely missed, um, and I appreciate um, everything that you've done for our students over the years, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the new business. Uh, so I, I'd like to hear some items. Uh, uh, anyone wants to talk about new business? So uh, a, a few items. Um, you stole my thunder, Mr. Kroll. So Sam, oh, that's okay. He deserves it. And Sam, uh, you've been, um, we, we overlapped for a couple of years professionally and, and then uh, on the board now for uh, a number of years. And um you know, couldn't have a, a a board member more committed to children and serving the community, and and it's a, it's appreciated. And you've always been really giving of your time, no matter what it is, whether you're at the hospital ro ro rolling somebody down or 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 here. But any time that we needed anything as well above and beyond, you always you would always show up and and take the time to do that. And sometimes I don't think folks realize um, the time that it takes behind the scenes as well. So. I know you'll stay busy, so I'm not. I'm not worried about that. You'll you'll, you'll keep moving, um, but congratulations. Thank you. The um, a couple uh, 
folks I want to recognize in the audience tonight. So we've we've um, the past couple of months there's you know there's been um, a lot of opportunity that's come available in the district, and so there were there were four new administrators who were approved on this previous agenda. Um, so I'd like to start um, Holly Fabian. Holly, if you can stand, where are you, Holly? There you go. Um, so Holly is currently a, a counselor at Freehold High School, and she's going to assume the position of uh, guidance supervisor at Freehold Township High School. Um, we're excited for the opportunity for Holly, and, and uh, I go back with Holly. She was uh, one of my original cohort folks, I think, in the grad classes here uh, with Montclair State, and uh, looking forward to it. So welcome aboard, Holly, in that capacity. Um, also, we have um, Michael Mendez. So Michael, if you could stand up. So Mike comes to us from New Egypt High School. Uh, is a ton of uh, building experience, both as an assistant principal at Wall Township and as the principal at New Egypt High School. Uh, we're excited for the opportunity to snag him to come over here to Friol Regional, um, where he'll be an assistant principal at Friol Township High School. And we're, we're looking forward to having you, Michael. So congratulations. <laughs> and Bruce, if you could stand up, Bruce Hanneker. So Bruce is um, was. Uh, Currently, most recently, the Director of Planning, Research, and Innovation at uh, Jersey City, I believe, uh, where he did uh, things like running the testing platform and the evaluation platform and a lot of real nitty-gritty work that's uh, tough work with uh, data in particular for the Jersey City Public Schools, which is one of the largest districts in the state. And uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Bruce come over as a new Director of Planning, Research, and Evaluation. So Bruce, welcome aboard. And then Jessica, Dr. Jessica Howland. Jessica, if you could stand up. So Jessica is uh, coming to us as our new Director of Special Services. Uh, she is uh, the Director of Special Services for a number of years now for the New Egypt Public Schools. I did apologize to Mr. North that we seem to unfairly raid um, another district. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful addition uh, for our team. And, and we're excited to have Jessica aboard. And that's a demanding position in this district. So thank you, Jessica. Good luck. That's it. Okay. Yes. I'll think about. It. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, three things. One, um, I just want to reiterate congratulations to Sam. Um, I've known Sam a long time. Uh, he did a great job as a vice principal at Red High School. Kids were so lucky to have him. Great. Absolutely, we're going to miss him as our holy block of Friel County, Friel Borough. So, yes. I, I wish you nothing but the best. Um, number two, um, I want to congratulate Holly. Um, I've known Holly a long time, being a uh, guidance counselor over at the borough. Uh, it does pain me, and I know I'm supposed to care about the district in, as a whole, but it does pain me that. Freehold Borough's loss is Freehold Township's gain. That's very difficult for me to say. So I just want to wish you all the best. And Carl, yes. as um, the real terms, I know I remember a while ago that you uh, wanted to thank Mr. Lawson for being your mentor. Yes. And I just want to say, Carl, that I, I appreciate all these years you being my mentor. Thank you very so much, welcome. Mr. Hatchin. <laughs> And best of luck to everybody. And with that, may uh, we have a motion to adjourn the motion. meeting. Motion. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Good, good night, everyone. Thank you.